Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Erin of Emerald Erin, and today I have a very special guest, Hello. Rachel of Maker Style, and we're actually doing this for her podcast, which is the Maker Style Podcast. So I will leave a link to all of her information in the description box down below. And yeah, we're doing a bra making Q&A today. So you guys send in questions on Instagram and I'm gonna answer them. Awesome, are you ready for the first one? Yes, by the so, way. New Babies on Instagram says that she is a total newbie and she's wondering what about lingerie making is it that seems so intimidating? She says that she's been admiring patterns and makes for years but has yet to take the plunge. This is coming from a quilter and a garment maker. She bought your bra making pattern, the Black Beauty, and some kits, um, but she's scared to dive into them. Do you have any tips? Um, I would say it's, it's kind of like anything that looks challenging from the outside. With bra making, you look at a bra and you're not entirely sure where to start. It's not as usual of construction always as, as what you're used to. So it really comes down to breaking it down into all manageable steps and the instructions on patterns will break things down into manageable steps. And when you tackle them independently like that, it's really a lot less intimidating. So try not to look at it as a whole finished product, but think about how it'll just break down into manageable steps. Speaking of the manageable steps, uh, Lula Ballou on Instagram is also asking about one particular step in the process. She says that she's always been super intimidated by the stage where you attach the cups into the band of the bra and she hasn't had much success because it's an extreme curve. Do you have any tips or tricks? Um, I would say for that, just pin it a lot. So pin all, pin your cup all into the band. And if you're not comfortable sewing over pins, you can baste it, mm -hmm. take your pins out, and then sew it in. Yeah. And I find too, like on that extreme curve, if you work with a smaller stitch size, it's often a little bit easier to maneuver around. And also if you slow down the speed on your sewing machine, if that's adjustable, it mm -hmm. stops you from speeding through the curve and uh, going off the rails. Always So Hungry uh, asked this question over on Instagram. She says, this might be difficult to convey over a podcast, but how do I know if my underwire will fit a pattern? How would the ideal wire sit compared to the pattern? I know there's something about splay, but I have no idea how to alter the pattern to fit my wire. Thank you. Um, okay, so generally every bra pattern is going to be designed with a specific wire in mind because that's part of grading your bra pattern is finding a grade of wires and uh, designing it for that. So I would definitely ask whoever designed the pattern, the pattern designer, what wire did they plan on using in this and you know where would you recommend buying it? So that would be the best wire that you could use. But if you want to modify a pattern for a wire that suits your body really well, the most important thing is to make sure that the bridge lines up with the shape of your wire. So if your wire is a lot lower in the front, you could lower the bridge. If it comes up on a more kind of vertical angle than a splayed angle, mm -hmm. make sure that the bridge isn't too wide. Because if, if your wire is very vertical in the front, for example, you might get kind of a pucker of fabric in the middle because mm -hmm. it's you know, trying to fit into a different shape. So as long as you make your bridge correct, the outside is going to kind of have splayed fabric and that will you know, because of the wire tension and everything, that will be a lot more adjustable, but the bridge is kind of the most important part in terms of a wire suiting a pattern. And just for everyone listening, you recently came out with a black beauty pattern. If mm -hmm. someone's thinking about wires for that, what wire should they be looking at for that pattern? Um, I use my orange underwire for that one, and it's similar to ones that you can buy other places as well. It's a day bra wire. Mm -hmm. I have PDF charts of all of my wires that you can print out and compare your wires to. Awesome. Uh, one last question uh, about fit over on my Instagram. Uh, a couple other people were asking about both adding volume to a bra cup and decreasing volume of a bra cup. Do you have any tips for doing those kinds of adjustments? Um, I would say that generally the grade between bra sizes is actually fairly small. So I would try to get as close as you can with the bra pattern. So if it's, if it's too tight, try the next size up. And if the next size up is just a little bit too loose, use that size and just take little tucks and pinches out where you can to make it fit your body. But um, adding a whole lot of volume to any specific size gets a little bit tricky and it's better to get as close as you can with the original pattern and then make smaller modifications. So you wouldn't necessarily recommend doing like a slash and spread method where you're like slashing in the cups to kind of add extra volume. You can do that, but it's a little bit more difficult than taking away volume mm -hmm. um, because, because you do have to slash and spread. So say you have a cup and it fits perfectly, but it's a bit tight along the neckline. Mm -hmm. Definitely a slash and spread method is perfect mm -hmm. for something like that. But if it seems too small overall, 
go up a cup size and, and then, then work backwards. and then work backwards because that's it's visually easier to see where it's going wrong or mm -hmm. where it's not fitting you properly and, and how it, much you need to remove yeah as opposed to cutting into it and kind of guessing and hoping yeah. that you're adding enough and that's it's a trickier thing to do so. yeah and for anyone listening that's not familiar with splash and slash and spread uh, what that is is when you have that pattern piece and you cut a line through it to leave a hinge at the very bottom and just kind of pivot yeah just yeah. like that uh, Aaron, if you're listening to the podcast, just made the emotion of two pieces of paper separating. Um, but that's a slash and spread method. Um, Worthy Design Studio asked on Instagram if you have any tips for sewing with fold over elastic other than practice. She can never get hers even. And we talked about this yesterday, and I think it's a really good question. Yeah, um, it depends a little bit on the fold over elastic you're using. But any fold over elastic that I use, I do a two pass system where you've got the wrong side of your fabric up and you've got the right side of the elastic flat and you line it up the center line of your elastic with the edge of your fabric you sew it on you cut off the excess fabric on the other side of your stitches you fold it over the edge and then you stitch it down again and two passes you just have way more control over it you can get a more even edge so i wouldn't try to do the whole like sandwich your elastic over the edge of your fabric and sew it that never works for me yeah um and also if you can get a slightly thicker fold over elastic it's easier to use. Uh, the fold over elastic that I carry is a little bit thicker and I find it gives that really sharp clean line on things and it's just easier to sew. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any tips for getting the tension right with fold over elastic? Um, I think it depends a little bit on your machine and your feed dogs. So some of that is practice, but I just keep just a hint of tension. It depends on your pattern as well. If your pattern is supposed to have a lot of tension and a lot of reduction from your elastic, like it's supposed to be ruched or mm -hmm. really pull in, some underwear patterns are like that, follow their guidelines of how long to cut the elastic. But generally, I don't like to pull on my elastic a lot when I sew. So I just have kind of a hint of tension. Mm -hmm. And it's usually just enough to combat how much your machine will stretch it out while you're sewing which is always a little bit your machine likes adding stitches to anything will kind of stretch it a little bit mm -hmm. so just enough to make it neutral kind yeah. of even that out awesome lena g on instagram asks uh what's the best way to get started with bra making she's never made one before uh, I would recommend getting a pattern and a kit because there are a lot of little components to bra making and starting off the bat trying to draft your own pattern is very ambitious yeah. Um, so yeah I would recommend getting a pattern getting a kit so you know you have all the right supplies and just following step by step with the instructions and you learn so much from just making up a bra that way and then working from there to change it however you want after that yeah. I think the kits really crucial um, if I've tried to do the DIY, like gather my own supply of things at Fabricland or Joanne's if you're mm -hmm. in the States, and uh, it's challenging to get the right stuff because there's a lot of variation between the size of elastic and the quality of the elastic, and that's really critical in bra making. Yeah. And the amount of success I had with bra making yeah. increased a lot once I started using the right materials consistently. Yeah. On Instagrams, the shredder asks, what's a good beginner pattern to start if you've never made a bra before? Um, I would recommend starting with a bralette or a pair of underwear so you get some experience sewing with elastics because elastic can be one of the trickier things that people are more intimidated by and if you're first doing it on a more complicated bra pattern like an underwired bra pattern it's kind of a lot to learn all at once so if you make a pair of underwear or a simple bralette first you don't have to worry about quite as heavily curved seams and, and things but you still get a feel for elastics and the type of stretch fabrics and things so that's the best starting place if you're getting into lingerie yeah Jillian from Every Fiber of My Being who's also my brother's-in-law's sister hi Jillian mm -hmm. asks um, how big can you make a bra I'm a 34 double H and um, I'm wondering if she can make her own that will be supportive enough. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if it's made and ready to wear, you can make it at home. There aren't machines out there that just like punch out bras. Like they all have to be made. So sometimes it can be tricky to find your exact size or your exact fit right off of a pattern straight. But there are a lot of things you can do with patterns to sister size, for example. So in the case of a 34 double H, that would be the same as like a 36 H or a 38 double G or a 40 G. So mm -hmm. if a pattern has a 40 G in it, for example, you can always modify the band to fit your smaller rib cage and we'll still have the large cup size. 
Um, oh, I just missed her name. Jessica Melendez on Instagram was asking if you can make bras like the Jordy bralette in a woven fabric, like a cotton or a cotton blend. Or does a bralette pattern usually need a little bit of stretch? She's mostly asking for the summer months where she needs a little bit of breathability. And also, she loves Jean Grey. Yes. <laughs> um, well, there are two reasons, two main reasons that I don't recommend woven fabrics for bras. The first and kind of most important one is that there are quarter inch small seam allowances on bras that are under a lot of strain because bras are very functional garments they're going to be under weight and tension and if you have really small seam allowances under a lot of tension mm -hmm. they're just going to fray and they're going to pull out it's not going to last very long it's not going to go through the wash many times before mm -hmm. it's all fraying out and the other side to that is that woven fabrics are woven so they have threads going on the warp and the weft and they have really hard lines of grain where it's kind of a a hard stop like if you try to pull it there's no give at all in a couple in two directions and then there's some bias so if you're trying to work around a curve with a woven fabric they don't really ease around anything they just have warped spots and hard flat spots whereas a knit fabric is actually like if you think of knitting it's like on a micro level actually knit together and they have a way of easing around fabrics. So if you kind of picture putting a bowling ball in the middle of a square of knit fabric and picking it up, generally, even if it's a non-stretch knit, it will kind of have a rounding ease to it that will mold over curves really well, mm -hmm. whereas a woven fabric will have flat spots and kind of warp spots on the bias that are yeah. kind Lots of moving of out. And, yeah. yeah, so you're just not going to get nearly as nice of a rounded shape from a woven. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, if you want to make yourself like the most beautiful silk bra, you can definitely do that. It probably won't be the longest lasting mm -hmm. or hard wearing bra, but if you're just looking to make something pretty for yourself, it can be done. Maybe put foam under it if you want slightly better shape, yeah. but, um, but generally wovens aren't ideal. Yeah. The first underwire bra I ever made, and the, actually the first bralette I ever made were with both woven fabrics. The longevity like definitely wasn't there, um, but I did find that adding the foam to the underwire bra helped a lot. But I will say that if you're really wanting to give woven fabrics a try, I know Olulu has a couple patterns made especially for woven fabric, uh, the Bambi bra in particular. And I think it's the grace panties that go with them that are also have like a woven bias cut front. Um, not gonna last as long against that longevity mm -hmm. um, issue with the seams. But if you really wanna give that a try and maybe you're kind of intimidated to invest in bra fabric because you haven't sewn a lot of bras yet, or you wanna give something a try with a certain scrap that you have, um, those are a place that you can start. Mm -hmm. Hello, it's me, Riley, asks, um, how can she get a professional finish at home? Um, I think a lot of that comes down to the materials that you buy. So things like having all of your materials coordinating and planning out your bra pat pattern and projects so that you have the right size hook and eye so that it's not like too wide or too narrow at the end and planning when you're going to attach the strap so they're not just sewn on as an afterthought at the end. All of those things like color coordinating and those little details go towards making it look really ready to wear mm -hmm. and really professionally made. And yeah, that comes down partly to just experience and skill and pre-planning and yeah. knowing bras, but also getting really nice supplies. It goes yeah. a long way. Yeah. And if, if you're having trouble getting lots of different colors um, where you live, right dye is great. You can dye a lot mm -hmm. of the findings so that everything matches. One of my favorite bras that I ever made, I dyed pretty much every component of it, a nice red color, and it turned out great. So would recommend that. Sewn in Blue on Instagram asks if you have any tips for working with Duoplex. She's using it to make the Black Beauty, which she says is a gorgeous pattern, by the way. And uh, she's convinced that it's the devil's fabric. Skip <laughs> stitches, a tiny, in, even when she's using a tiny needle, size eight, it pushes the fabric into her throat plate. And she's ended up surging all the seams in the pattern so that she doesn't have to deal with that. If you have any tips, she'd appreciate it. Um, honestly, machines are kind of finicky and they like some things and they don't like other things. And it's probably gonna come down to trying different needles. I use a stretch uh, 7511 Schmetz needle and that works really well for me for most things, but sometimes people find ballpoint needles work a little bit better for them. Mm -hmm. Machines are just picky and they have preferences and you just kind of need to learn what your machine likes. The other thing that can really help is using a high quality thread. Um, cheaper threads, you can kind of see like little flyaways coming off of them and they don't want to glide through fabric fabrics quite as easy or quickly. So 
if you get a really nice high quality tightly spun thread that can go a long way to making sure that it's going to be a really good stitch yeah and Anna Cassandro also kind of mirrors that sentiment. She said that for her, a 70-10 ballpoint needle works best, but she's had good luck using a universal and stretched Microtex needle uh, to sew a dual flex in the past. Triceratops underscore 730 asks on Instagram, uh, if you have any tips on top stitching so that the stitch lines on the cups don't show through your shirt. Um, I would say that comes down a little bit to the fabric you're using. If you're using a really thick fabric that and you're folding your seam allowances up and top stitching through three layers. That's just gonna be a thick seam that's probably gonna show through your shirt. So thinner fabrics are better. But also, with seams, like you're probably gonna see them through a tight knit shirt. That's just part of having a bra that's not a molded foam cup. Mm -hmm. And that's that's life with handmade bras somewhat. Yeah. You're, not, you're not gonna get a perfectly smooth invisible bra when it has seams yeah because uh, that's just a foam cup thing. which is like a little bit of an adjustment to get used to but i, I was kind of scared about that when i first started making my own bra yeah. and i was like oh my gosh the horror is not completely yeah. round um but i got used to it and yeah and people don't <laughs> notice at all like <laughs> nobody ever has come up to me and has been like your, your bra has seams or like you know uh, it's not nearly as noticeable as you think it is, yeah. um, especially when you first start wearing them, and you're like, "This yeah. is so different and so weird." But it, like nobody, nobody really cares or no. notices. So, and over time, like now that I'm more used to wearing like seamed bras, I do find that the shape is a little bit more natural and flattering, um, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the round, perfectly round boob is kind of weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's kind of like phasing out too. Yeah, an old trend. Uh, Stable to Cheetahs asks, um, how do I know what a firm, medium, or soft power net is, especially when I'm buying online? Um, well, you can ask the supplier, and you can also, uh, generally speaking, for power net and power mesh and things, because people have different names for it, power net will have like small rectangular holes in it instead of like round circular holes like a stretch mesh or something. Um, it's kind of a fine detail. You'd need a really good photo of it to be able to see that. But it's also, it is just a little bit hard to know. You might have to request a sample if you're really unsure. Mm -hmm. um, Nellie Minel asks, uh, oh, sorry, I did have another point I wanted to add to that. Um, you can also, if your pattern's calling for a certain level of power net, um, mm -hmm. ask the designer if they have like a certain supplier that they really like working with. Um, like I know your, your patterns are probably drafted for your power net. Yeah. That is that <laughs> level of firmness. So that's always a good place to start. Um, Nellie Minel asks if you have any favorite modifications to spice up a tried and true basic pattern. And yes. Um, I would say if you've made it with lace before, make it without lace and have like a different neckline finish. Like the Black Beauty has the view A and the view B. And they're at the core fundamentally the same pattern, but the modification of a lace edge or um, or having like the fold over and the double strap really add different details and kind of spice it up and make a difference. So just kind of the thought process behind adding a lace edge usually makes your pattern look really different anyways. Mm -hmm. So something like that would be a great way to kind of change an old favorite. Yeah. Um, this is kind of similar to the question that Joyce had where she asks if you have any tips to pick up colors when you can't match them perfectly. Like if you can't get all the same shade of a power net, lining, elastics, do you have any rule of thumb for how you kind of make uncohesive pieces look more cohesive together? Um, one thing you can do is stick entirely to black or white for all of your elastics in your power net. Mm -hmm. And then you can have whatever kind of printer color you want and you can have white and black and you can also dye white to whatever mm -hmm. color you want. Um, but if you really want to have different colors and you don't want to dye them, stick to like color families when you're buying things. So if you're buying um, different like pinky and peachy tones, kind of keep to that area and keep it either warm tones or cool tones. Mm -hmm. And then the colors can kind of blend together a little bit better than if you're buying kind of random all over the place and some are cold and some are warm and that they don't yeah. always go necessarily. Yeah, I think it's cool to have contrast when you're making bras as well. Mm -hmm. Like your elastic doesn't have to match. It can be like a total contrast. And I think that's a really nice look as well. Yeah. Um, she also had a question about if you have any tips for sewing foam cups together. Um, that again is gonna be machine specific. So try different needles, uh, try 
different thread, high quality thread can't go amiss. You can also check your feed dogs under your machine. Like sometimes feed dogs are a little bit tough because foam is a bit thicker. And sometimes the tension of your presser foot is too much or the feed dogs aren't moving it through properly and it's getting stuck and then it will wave. <laughs> so work and fiddle with the adjustment on your sewing machine and try different things and sample seams and yeah yeah when I first started sewing with foam I had a tendency to kind of pull it too much through the machine which will also make things very wavy yeah. um so I found that like being very gentle with it helps and also um increasing the length of your stitch has helped me from having such a wavy appearance on my foam yeah um Helen Fern and Thread asks can you explain the different types of elastic for us please very yeah, um, so there are a few main types of elastic. One main one is Pico Plush, or some people call it band elastic, and it's elastic that is plush on one side, so that's a soft side that goes against your body, and it usually has a little pico, and you can use that on the bottom band of your bra, or the top band of your bra, or even the neckline, and it comes in different widths, so I have it in three quarters of an inch, or 20 millimeters, and half inch and three eighths of an inch so you can use it in different places so that's one type of elastic um, the other type of elastic is strap elastic that you use for bra straps you can use it for the whole thing or just the adjustable part in the back and it's a lower stretch uh, a lower stretch elastic that usually has a satiny kind of shiny side that's going to be on the outside and then more plush side on the back that's going against your skin mm -hmm. And there's also fold over elastic, which is um, a thin, flat type of elastic with a crease in the middle, and you fold it over the edge of whatever you're sewing and finish it with that type of edge. And those are the main types of elastic. There's also clear elastic that you can get, um, and that's a thin strip of totally clear elastic. You can use it for swimwear or for the neckline edge mm -hmm. um, under lace so you can't see it. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there are any other. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much that it. That I can think of. And if you don't have clear elastic in your sewing arsenal already, I think it's a really good addition, not just for bra making, but for other things. Mm -hmm. It's great to use if you want to stabilize like the shoulder seam of a t-shirt to make sure it doesn't get bagged out and stretched out. Um, mm -hmm. So if you buy clear elastic, I'm sure you'll use it a lot. It's a really versatile thing to have in your sewing space. C. Hazel So asks, um, she says she has so many questions, but she thinks the biggest one is, how do you get near stitching on straps and the hook closure? When I make bralettes, I found that these areas are really challenging to get to look nice. She's tried a hump jumper, which I'm not sure what that is, maybe you know. Yeah. Um, and, but the start and the end of the zigzag stitches never looks good. Yeah, so a hump jumper is something that you put under the foot of your sewing machine, so you start on like a higher level. Like, oh, so okay. if something's kind of thick, you put the hump jumper under your foot so that you're starting it's on that elevated. same, yeah, on the yeah. elevated, so you don't have to, so, hump jump, <laughs> hump jump. yeah. So uh, what I would recommend for that is if you have a really thick seam, start a little ways in, back stitch to the edge, yes. and then keep going forward. Mm -hmm. Don't try to start at the very beginning of it because it's too thick and it's kind of higher up. So it's easier to start where you would normally end your kind of back stitch area mm -hmm. and then just go backwards and then start forwards again yeah um so that would be that would be my recommendation and also some of it comes down a little bit to planning and planning where your straps are going to go so you don't end up with a super thick seam mm -hmm. and a lot of bulk to sew through and you can kind of plan around that with really good bra design yeah a specific tip that I've been using for the hook and eye is sometimes I find it hard to get really close to where the hooks are and my machine doesn't like it because they're sticking out. So I'll switch to a zipper foot at that point just so I can get a mm -hmm. little bit closer to those hooks yeah. and not have to worry about it getting in the way. And like moving your needle around. Some machines have the ability to really move their needle super far over. And if you can do that, um, you can kind of stay, like keep your foot fairly far from those hooks and have your needle kind of way over to the side to still catch it. Uh, Monica, Monica Hoffman Photography asks, what kind of fabrics work best for bra making? Uh, the best kind of fabrics are going to depend on your pattern. So firstly, always check the fabric requirements because some patterns are for stretch, some patterns are for non-stretch, and you want to make sure that you're using the one that the pattern was designed for because it can end up not supportive enough or too loose or too tight if you're not using the right level of stretch in your fabric. And generally speaking, knit fabrics are the best, foam, lace, low stretch knits generally, 
Um, yeah, things like that are the best and yeah. ideal. And that's another situation where you can always ask your designer mm -hmm. if you're working with an indie pattern. Yeah. I feel like most designers have a couple shops in mind where they would be like, yeah, yeah. so-and-so stuff would work well for this pattern. Yeah. So that's always a good bra thing to tool. Ask. I always <laughs> recommend bra tool. <laughs> Which is so fun. I can't forget my favorite. My favorite. <laughs> This question's kind of funny. Uh, Weckham asks over on Instagram, why do I look like Madonna in the 80s when I wear my Mimi bras? <laughs> well, <laughs> depends on the pattern you're using. Uh, but also, the level of kind of pointiness that you get in a bra is somewhat due to the bra pattern and how it's designed, but it can also be a lot to do with how it just fits your body and the amount of projection that the pattern was designed for. So it could be that the bra cup is a little bit big for you so you're not kind of filling it out properly or maybe it's like way too flat in the neckline and you need to open that up a lot more mm -hmm. and have like round the shape up a lot more so that would probably be the answer to that is just modifying the pattern until it until it kind of suits the the shape that you're looking for yeah and also I know like for your recent black beauty you said that it took you quite a few variations to try yeah. and like reduce the Madonna boot and that was something that you were yeah. like really focused on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, like I'm a millennial, I come from a generation of very round boot yes. look. Th that and very smooth. <laughs> yeah, very smooth and round look. So it definitely was on my mind with this pattern, trying to make it as round as possible and and like still a natural shape, but mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it kind of comes down to modifying your pattern to what you're looking for and trying to pick a silhouette in a, in a bra pattern that you really like because some are more designed to be a little more old fashioned shape and some are a little bit more modern and, you know, yeah. and it, different patterns work well for different people and breast shapes. Uh, this is a great question, uh, from Aubergine Kenobi. Um, she said maybe a stupid newbie question, but it's not. Uh, do you need to pre-wash power mesh, lace, and elastic? I don't pre-wash anything um, because I find they're easiest to work with before you wash them because they can get kind of wrinkled or sometimes there's a little bit of starch in them that kind of helps to keep them in place while you're sewing. Most of those fabrics aren't going to shrink because they're synthetics, they're not natural fibers. And when you do wash them in the future, always hand wash all of your bras because elastics don't go through hot water very well. Spandex isn't really designed to go through that very well and yeah. it can kind of make your straps go completely wavy and yeah and like you know. I've had I put bras in the wash and the laces come out like and shredded which is really yeah. sad when you yeah. make like special handmade underwear and they're just like gone yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was really heartbreaking um, so don't make that mistake uh, wash them by hand definitely uh, the flannel tomato says I love your black beauty and I just made it she says that when she makes a bra with a power bar, so that's kind of like that external... Yeah, the external power bar. Perfect. Uh, she says they have a tendency to push her barely C cups together into the center too much, and she finds it's a little bit of an odd look. Do you have any tips on a modification that she could do to kind of reduce the forward the push? Oomph. Yeah. Um, reducing the oomph. That's not a question I get too much. <laughs> no, it's not my favorite um, part of the black <laughs> <thing. laughs> Yeah. Um, I would say this is a good case for a slash and spread mm -hmm. sort of thing. So cut into the power bar midway through the cup, kind of from the opening to the wire line, and just spread it a little bit. Spread it enough until, it, until it's kind of where you want it to be and it doesn't have much of the kind of push or tension effect there. So to kind of reduce like the inwards push, you'd yeah. want to kind of extend the power bar a little bit make it a little bit wider yeah we'll make it a little bit longer okay yeah along the edge so that that um like specifically on the black beauty pattern from where it attaches at the bottom of the wire line up to where the strap is if you make that section longer along the elastic edge less tension it will kind of take away the impact of it and and make it looser basically okay. so that it won't be tight. So for everyone listening to the podcast that's not seeing Aaron and I kind of like gesture with our hands on this, um, you would kind of cut in from the center where the apex is towards the side seam and add a yeah. little bit more space there doing slash and spread. Yes. Awesome. Not my girl so asks, which I think I know the answer to, what's the best one-stop website for all of your supplies? Well, um, <laughs> I would recommend myself, of course, um, but there are a lot of different bra supplies places. Some might be better for you if they're a little bit closer to where you live. So um, if you need things like if you want uh, more local shipping or things like that. And honestly, I feel like 
every every bra supply shop has their own kind of style and aesthetic so look around and see what you like the most and see whose supplies you feel are most in touch with your unique sense of style and yeah awesome uh floor cameron asks what are your best tips for wire fitting um for wire fitting uh the best tip i could say is if you aren't like in a store where they have all the wires in front of you uh yeah order a wire fitting pack so whatever bra size you measure into if it's the first bra you're making order a size bigger and a size smaller mm -hmm. and then try those wires in the bra that you make mm -hmm. and when you try it on you can kind of get a sense of which wire supports you the best or which wire is the comfiest or the least comfy and mm -hmm. you can really kind of see what suits your body because quite often people aren't exactly the wire size that their pattern dictates they should be mm -hmm. so trying a couple different ones and trying them particularly in a bra that you've made is one of the best ways to actually feel because you can try them like just directly against your body and see how they sit mm -hmm. but you are going to have a little bit of it pulling in here because there's nothing holding the out. wire open and wires are going to be under a bit of tension and splay a little bit when they're actually in the bra so they're not going to fit exactly the same when you just hold them up to your body yeah so it's one thing to consider when you're trying it just directly against your body and what are you looking for when you're trying to assess if a wire fits or not you want it to sit right in that crease of where your breast tissue meets your chest wall mm -hmm. so and you can usually kind of feel that like even if you have like a little bit more weight on your rib cage you can usually feel the point where okay this is breast tissue and then this is um, like just body tissue mm -hmm. uh, there's usually a crease there an yeah. inframammary crease that it's very tough that term <laughs> yeah <laughs> that the wire will sit into and if it's sitting on your breast tissue that'll be uncomfortable or if it's sitting too far on your rib cage and your like regular body tissue that will also be a little bit uncomfortable so you want it to sit kind of perfectly in that crease if you can um, Spool Stories asks another underwire related question. She says that she's noticed that there are so many different types of underwear wires. I know, it's kind of overwhelming if you're not part of the bra world. Um, and she asks if you can kind of give a little primer on, you know, what underwires you have and like what body types they're suited for, etc. Yeah, I offer a lot of different styles because when it comes to underwires, it's best for it to suit your body type because if the wire is just overall too narrow or too shallow and splayed no matter what size you pick it's probably not going to work very well for your body type mm -hmm. um so it as far as what patterns they work in most patterns are designed for a specific underwire like we were saying for another question so if you want something that's a different shape and a different style you'll probably have to modify your pattern a little bit i actually have a blog post on this you yes. can check out on my website for changing for different styles or sizes of underwires but uh, generally speaking with the underwires and the different shapes it kind of comes down to what sort of u curve they have so if they're a, like a really narrow curve or if they're a really shallow and splayed curve um, some will just work better on different body types mm -hmm. and you know one example is if you have a really tiny rib cage and really large cups you're probably going to have a tall u shape mm -hmm. underwire that will suit you the best and will be the most supportive but if you are maybe smaller and very small chested that wire is probably not going to fit on your rib cage very well and yeah. will sit way too low and not be wide enough. So you'll want something that's a little bit more shallow and splayed. And that's all just personal body dependent. Everyone can be different. So yeah, um, yeah. So it's really good to try different wire styles if you're finding the one that you're wearing isn't very comfy. And yeah, kind of look at look at your breast shape shape and kind of assess and think about what might be the comfiest fit. Yeah. And as a rundown, you offer the Omega, the Orange. The Omega, the Orange, the Bliss, the Plunge, the Round, the France. Oh my gosh. And the Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> like this, I have wires. seven. I was like, I have seven of them. And if so. someone is, you know, new to this and they're like, holy guacamole, where do I even start? Yeah. What would be like a couple um, good ones to look at first. The orange is the most basic wire. It is the most standard kind of in most bra pattern style of wire, day bra wire. The round is slightly taller than that, so slightly more coverage. And then if you find you have narrower breast tissue, 
Um, the bliss is really good, and the omega is for kind of more extreme vertical, like tall, narrow wires. And then if you find that you need a shallower wire, the France is really good for that. Or if you just need not shallower, but just wider wire, the Carmen is good for that. Mm -hmm. And then the plunge is just lower in the center front. So if you're making a bra that has a low center front, that would be the wire for, for that. Awesome. So the plunge is a little more style specific than fit specific. Cool. Um, and we had a lot of commenters asking about, you know, if say you're going through a period of life where you're having some rapid boob changes, while they're, whether you're like noticing throughout your cycle that your boobs are growing and shrinking or you're mm -hmm. expecting a pregnancy and your body is changing, do you have any tips on how to approach bra making if you're in a season of your life where it seems like your boobs are changing all the time? Um, unfortunately, bra fit is pretty specific, mm -hmm. so it's hard to make a bra that's going to fit all different sizes and fluctuations it's mm -hmm. kind of not really possible to make like a magic bra that changes with you unfortunately that'd be cool though uh it would be cool it'd be really cool <laughs> when you figure um, out how to do that Aaron, not please yeah sign me <laughs> one of the one thing you can do is if you add foam to your cup um foam helps to keep a cup kind of a little bit more filled out like even if it's a thin foam it helps to keep a cup slightly more filled out and rounded so if you deflate a little bit or inflate a little bit it can kind of smooth things out whereas fabric wrinkles more yeah. so it's a little more visually obvious if it's not fitting you well so foam can just kind of like smooth things out for a small amount yeah. but if you are like getting pregnant and you're going up like by five, five cup sizes like you just you yeah. have to get a new bra <laughs> yeah and our bralettes like a little bit more forgiving bralettes are a lot more forgiving on fit especially if they're made out of stretch so it really depends on how much support you need from your bra so a bralette will kind of grow and shrink with you um, a lot more but underwired bras are a little more picky yeah if you're the kind of person that can get away with maybe making a bra like out of jersey that might mm -hmm. grow a little bit more than you know yeah. your duoplex and wire yeah. bra that's certainly not moving a whole lot yeah um that kind of wraps up all the questions i have on my end do you mind if we open up your dms and yeah yeah for sure dig in there Sarah Langmead asks on Instagram, is it possible to make a bra without elastic that's still supportive? She's allergic to elastics, spandex, or latex. This is the only thing that's stopping her from making her own bra. There's a community of us, and the only bras we can purchase are made by one company that are made with knit jersey. Um, that's a really difficult one, especially if you can't have any spandex or things like that. Um, if there's no stretch in the bra, it's really hard to make a supportive bra. So... I would ask if there's any way you can cover your elastic, so maybe have elastic but have it in a casing in the bottom, like cover it in, in the jersey so that it's sandwiched between the two layers. If that's possible, there might be some way to kind of hack a bra or something like that, but otherwise, I'm not really sure about that one. Yeah, I can't think of really anything. Like maybe could you make the Jordy and seam it instead of have the elastics? On like um, the fold over, it wouldn't necessarily fit the same though. It wouldn't necessarily fit the same. It wouldn't kind of hug the body, and I don't know what you do for the bottom band of elastic. Yeah. Um. So you could cover that with with fabric, but but yeah, something to look into and look into kind of the specifics of of what it is. A lot of people have latex free elastics, but if you can't have any spandex, then there's no elastic Recovery. quality at all to to a material. So. Um, Bandit Casey asks, um, how, when she's sewing fold over elastic on cups, she's noticing that it's getting like a little bit wavy mm -hmm. and, uh, she's wondering like what is going wrong there and what's the solution? Um, you might need to change the tension on your machine. You might need to adjust the feed dogs as one. It could just be stretching it out too much as you sew. You might also need to lengthen your stitch length. If your stitches are really tight, it could be stretching out your elastic. Or the other thing is you might have to add a tiny bit of tension to your elastic as you're sewing it on to kind of compensate for your machine a little bit. And a combination of those three things, tweaking them until you find the sweet spot is, is kind of the best thing to do. Angeli Matt asks, um, what's a common mistake for first time uh, bra makers often make in fit? So in other words, what steps can she ensure when she's embarking on her first project uh, to make sure it's gonna fit? Um, well, generally with bra making, you do need to make a muslin. Fitting is, a, is definitely not as guaranteed as with kind mm -hmm. of looser silhouette clothing. Um, but the best thing that you can do is read the instructions in the pattern and follow the designer's guide to finding your size and not just thinking, 
I'm this and ready to wear, or I've always been a mm -hmm. fill in the size here and actually looking up your size in that pattern because the designer will have tested it with different people who are that size. And I mean, everyone can be slightly different and your tissue can be sitting differently on your body. So mm -hmm. it's not guaranteed that that would work, but you're going to get a lot closer right off the bat if you follow their sizing guide, as opposed to just saying, I've always bought a 32C, so that's what I'm going to get. Yeah. And especially in my pattern, because I do UK sizing, if you're used to your size at Victoria's Secret, it's going to be very different than your size in my pattern. Yeah. So if you just make it up without looking into that, you're probably going to be disappointed by what you make. Yeah. When I bought bras at La Senza last, I believe I was buying like a 32B, sometimes a 32C, and in Aaron's patterns, I believe I saw up like... You, you probably know better than I do, but I think like I think a 28 you're double I a 28E. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's totally different. I specifically know you're a 28E. <laughs> <laughs> know my bra better than I do. Like, you're my 28E tester. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that definitely uh, helps. Um, and I think that might be all of the questions from your DMs, unless I'm missing something. Oh. Uh, this is a fun question from Muriel. Uh, Muriel's lovely and she listens to the podcast. Hi, Muriel. Um, she says her question is if you could tell us a little bit about upcoming patterns and pandy patterns and kind of what, what's, what are you excited about to come? Um, ooh, that's a good question. I have a swimwear pattern that's kind of in the pipeline. So <laughs> and so that should be coming at some point. No promises right now. The Black Beauty launch was a little crazy and I feel a little behind. I need to like find my center again before and, I like take a vacation. Something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I have that planned and other than that swimmer pattern, I have another swimmer pattern designed and I have a lot of ideas for different bra patterns, but I haven't landed on exactly which one I'm going to do next because yeah. I, I love all of them and I'm like, Ooh, which one, which one? I'm so. excited for that bathing suit to come out into the world though because I tested it for you like last summer yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's like my, the bathing suit I wear all the time and I haven't shared it online yet and people are like, what's your favorite bathing suit pattern? And I'm like, well, you know, um, it's a it, secret. It's a secret. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a great pattern and I'm really excited for you guys to finally uh, get to see it when, yeah. whenever you have a chance to get around to that. Not like you don't have enough on your plate. Yeah. Um, just trying to see. Uh, what tends to be the most challenging step in bra making? Um, honestly, I hear different things from everybody as far as the challenging step. Generally, bra fitting is a very challenging thing, but in bra construction, I hear from people all the time about, you know, this is more challenging or this is the hardest part. And Honestly, it's, it's always really different. I think some of it comes down to how finicky your machine is about certain parts. Mm -hmm. Some people's machines, they struggle a little bit more with elastic than other people. Some people find that channeling is really hard to apply. I think it really comes down to they're all really manageable steps when you actually break everything down. So it's just kind of um, whatever, whatever you find the most difficult application. And mm -hmm. that comes down to fiddling with your machine settings and um and getting a little bit of practice yeah and that was asked by hope uh hope eve hope eve um and she also asks if how important is tension when you're sewing a bra given all the delicate lines and the proper fit that you need to achieve um well it is really important for machine tension if that's what she means um because if the tension in your machine is off, your seam will kind of pull out too much or it'll be too tight and it will kind of pucker and mm -hmm. indent. So you definitely have to fiddle with your machine a bit and make sure the settings are all kind of lined up and everything. But Cool. Um, well, that's it for the questions from the DM, but I have a couple of bonus questions for you. Okay. Uh, are you ready? Okay. Let's set this down. Okay. So you work with bra fabric like all the time. Yes. And I'm kind of wondering if you have any tips about bra fabric um, that people who don't sew with it all the time might not know about like different secrets behind each fabric or different mm -hmm. maybe little things that they should know. Um, well, my number one would be about bra tulle. That's one of my favorite fabrics. <laughs> and one of the secrets, because the best way to use it is to use two layers and have the opposing direction of grain. So bra tool is very non-stretch in one direction and then has kind of give in the other direction so if you use a double layer of it with opposing directions it's a really stable fabric but it's also really kind of smooths and shapes around curves and mm. is super breathable which is nice in the summer yeah um but the trick to using it actually is 
there is a right and a wrong side to Tool, and you can feel it um, if you kind of feel both sides. One is going to be really smooth and slippery, and the other side is going to just be a little bit grabbier and more rough. And so if you have both right sides facing out and the wrong sides together, they're going to grip together more and they're not going to slip and slide everywhere on you as much. But if you have both right sides against each other and like number one, it's going to be a little bit itchier when you sew it um, because you have the wrong side against your skin, which is like a little bit less comfortable. But also you're going to find it's just slipping and sliding out on you everywhere because it's two slippery sides against each other. Yeah. So, and there's no friction kind yeah. of keeping them in place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas, That's something I did not know before yesterday. Yeah, whereas the two friction sides together really help to make it a little grippier and easier to sew. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big thing if you're working with bra tool, which is one of my favorites. Um, other tricks to fabrics. A lot of other fabrics are fairly straightforward, like you don't have to use double layers or specifics. A lot of fabrics will actually have a right side, and when you're working with bra making fabrics, a lot of people are pretty sensitive and they want the smoothest thing. So I always test against my lips to see what's the smoothest side, because it can be really hard to tell on some fabrics. And try it in both directions of grain, because sometimes it's smooth both sides on one direction, but the other direction will have a little bit of grip to it or a little grain. So if you feel it against your lips in a couple directions, your lips are really sensitive to texture, so you can usually tell which side is the right side, even if you visually can't see a difference between the sides. Yeah, and you also, you and your mom shared a really fun tip with me this morning when we were just hanging out at your house yeah. about bra foam that I did not know and it's going to save me a bunch of money on bra foam. Um, I'm trying to remember what oh, it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I say? It was about ironing your bra foam. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can iron your bra foam, or at least the bra foam that I supply. Check with your supplier specifically about ironing bra foam. But if you iron it on medium with steam, the wrinkles will come right out of your bra foam. Yeah, so if you've ever brought bra foam and you like folded it to store it, and then you take it out and it's so wrinkled, and then you try to sew with it, and you just have this awful wrinkle in your bra, yeah. and like, yeah, yeah you can just make it just go away. It. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And it will all be. Yeah, great yeah. again. And that's something cool about your foam in particular because it is mm -hmm. that microfiber on the inside and it's really soft. So yeah. if you've sewn with foam before um, and you found it to be like a little scratchy or not the most comfortable, Erin's foam is quite nice. And yes. I'm not just saying that because you're here beside me. Well, <laughs> it's the microfiber stuff. Well, when I pick <laughs> fabrics for my shop, it's always with myself in mind. And yeah. I like the luxurious <laughs> fabrics. So I, yeah, I would, when yeah. I when my supplier came to me with different samples, I was like, that one. Yeah, because that one so exactly. <laughs> like yeah. I will take nothing but that one. Yeah. So. And now whenever I have the choice, I'm always making a bra with foam because there's really nothing else that's like quite as soft that I find on the inside. Yeah, yeah. It even feels... even like bra tool or really soft fabrics, foam is the softest thing you can have. And if you're a larger cup size and you're a little bit nervous about using foam because you're like, oh, it'll make me look even bigger and you know really add. It's a very thin foam, mm -hmm. and it really doesn't add much volume to your cup at all. Yeah, and I do find, at least for me, I'm not an expert bra maker by any means, but I do find that my projects with foam end up looking a little bit more professional and forgiving, and I think that's mm -hmm. kind of what we talked about earlier with foam and fit, Yeah, how it just it has a little bit more, I guess, like, maybe stability is the word that I'm looking for. Yeah, it holds its own. Yeah. So you don't have to, it's kind of the same as when you're taking a photo of a bra that's a fabric cup and the cups just like <laughs> fall. <Totally laughs> like deflated. they're just like, whoosh. you're like, ooh, how do I make this look cute? You're like stuffing um, the inside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you have a foam bra, the cups are like standing up on their own and they look really nice. Yeah. And you're not going to get those little tiny fit issue wrinkles or fabric mm -hmm. wrinkles in there where it's like oh it's like a little off or I didn't sew my elastic perfectly or I made a little nick in this one seam mm -hmm. you're not really going to see that in foam foam is like very forgiving yeah and, like gentle fabric to work with yeah. and so don't yeah. be scared of foam don't be scared of foam foam yeah. is great I love foam um and I guess kind of my my last question like you get questions all the time about bra making mm -hmm. and is there anything that we didn't get a chance to touch on today that you're like this is a hot tip that I want to share. Ooh, ooh. Um, one hot tip, and I want to do a blog post on it soon, is, uh, and we briefly talked about it, um, but that's sister sizing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people wonder why pattern designers might split their pattern into two size ranges and, you know, oh, well, like I'm right on the edge. I'm not really sure which size of the pattern to buy. 
And what I always recommend to people is pick the size range that you have the most flexibility and options in. So if you measure into a, you know, in my pattern, the cup size divide goes from a double D cup and then the next size range is an E cup. Mm -hmm. If you're the 40 double D in my pattern and you think you're on the edge and you might be the 40 E, I would always go with the 40 E because you're the largest size that's offered in the other pa in the smaller size range. So if you go up to the next size range, you actually have a lot of cups above and below it because there's a lot of overlap with sister sizing between the two bra patterns. So if, if you have the 40 double D, for example, which would be a 46 uh, wire, then in the larger size range, it actually covers, you're actually the smallest size of the large size range. Which is insane to me. And <laughs> you have a 36 underwire, mm -hmm. and the large size range has a 36 to a 54 underwire covered in it, mm -hmm. in different cup sizes. And the smaller size range has a 30 to a 46 wire covered in it, into it. So there's really an overlap of wire size 36 to 46 with both patterns. So I would pick whichever size range kind of gives you the most flexibility on either side. So if you're the absolute largest size in one range, switching to the other range means you're going to have kind of a lot on either side to work with in terms of sizes. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're like smack in the middle of everything and you're not sure, like you're the 34 double D slash E, pick the one that you like the findings most. If you like wide findings, pick mm -hmm. the larger size range. If you like narrow findings, pick the smaller size range so you don't have to modify any of that for yourself. Mm -hmm. And and it's a simple modification of altering your back band to be one or two sizes different to make a totally different bra size. Yeah. Um, so it's not kind of the be all end all which size range you pick, um, providing you're not completely measuring like into one size range or the other. So if you're somewhere in the middle, then you have a lot of options with either pattern yeah. um, with very simple modifications. And I guess with your pattern in particular, or like from an outside perspective, I know technically there's differences, but kind mm -hmm. of the biggest visual difference would be the fact that the findings are a little bit different in yeah. both side ranges. Yeah. But besides that, is there any differences between the two? Uh, no. Awesome. There and are like, no differences. And for a total newbie, like why is the findings different for the smaller size range versus the larger cup sizes? Um, well, for the smaller size range, it's a half inch elastic on the bottom band, half inch straps, and a narrower two by three hook and eye in the back. And the large si fi uh, size findings are three quarter inch mm -hmm. bottom band, three quarter inch strap, and three by three hook and eye. And that really comes down to comfort and support. The larger your cups are, usually the more kind of oomph and support and comfort that you need from your bra. And three quarter findings are a bit overkill on the small <laughs> sizes as well. Yeah. And usually the proportion of the bra looks better with different findings. So depending on the proportion of your cup size and everything, it'll look better with larger or smaller findings. You can modify that to your preferences as well. It's not a huge modification, but it's definitely easier to like make your band a tiny bit bigger than to modify all of your seam allowances in yeah. the whole pattern. So that's what I recommend to people. Yeah, so if you're totally new to bra making, you could probably go and measure one of your existing ready to wear bras, see the size of the findings, if you fit into mm -hmm. both size ranges, and kind of make a decision based on there about yeah. what kind of findings you like. Because if you're totally new to the bra world, and we're like, yeah, just select the one that you really like the findings for, I would be like, what? <laughs> I have no preference on findings. Yeah. <laughs> I have no but, preference. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure um, I'm sure if you check out your ready-to-wear bras, um, yeah. that, that's a good starting point to kind of understand what your preferences are already. Yeah. And generally, like, like, the smaller findings are, like, narrower, and if you're looking for something that's, like, super dainty and light, that would be suited to it. Or if you're like, I like support, yeah. and I want a like a bra that's gonna hold me in, <laughs> pick a larger, like, the larger findings are a yeah. little bit more supportive, so, yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's all my bonus questions. Erin, mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit more about where we can find out more about you and your patterns and your cool shop that we're currently filming in? Yeah, so uh, you can find me at, at Emerald Aaron Sews on Instagram and on YouTube. And my website is emeraldaron.com, and my shop is shop.emeraldaron.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, my studio is in Trenton, but it's not open to the public. So, uh, <laughs> just to me, it's not, who, uh, yeah. likes to crash. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, I just fill all the orders here um, and ship them out internationally to all of you wonderful people. Yeah. And yeah, so that's more about me. And do you want to tell some people for my video um, yeah. about where to find you? Yeah, so you can find out more about the podcast looking anywhere that you listen to podcasts just by searching Maker Style. Uh, there's going to be probably 50 episodes in the back catalog by the time this comes out. So lots to listen to there. So many amazing podcasts. Definitely listen. Well, thanks. And Erin actually came on a little bit earlier, a couple years ago, I think like maybe episode 30 and change. Mm -hmm. um, so there's more Erin uh, in that as well. I'm more vintage Erin and Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> a throwback, if you will, because that was I, like two years ago. Um, and you can go to makerstyle.ca uh, to check out the blog and the website and all my information is there as well. And I'm on Instagram at maker.style. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Sounds That's great, right, guys. Have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Bye. I'm, like, talking to my phone, because that's, like, usually the people I talk to. Yeah. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Turn to thunder. Oh, I'm baby, like, you're wow. safe. That's so cool.